Well, isn't that just an epic intro? And debunked. Hmm. So we are going to see something that is clearly nonsense be sewn to be such, are we? Well, that's about half right, but mostly in a, hey, me no understand science, so I'ma prove it wrong and catastrophically failing kind of way. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Matter to man, protein to purpose, accident to president, and poo-poo to pawpaw. Well, that's something. All these things sound like, well, they sound like idiotic creationist talking points about evolution. But no, it couldn't be that. If they were as honest in their desire to understand the facts about reality as they say they are, they would have known by now that none of that shit makes any sense and they should really stop saying it. Oh right, honesty, a foreign concept to creative boys. Welcome to the evolution revolution, my stardust siblings. It's all the rage, you know. All the rage? What are you talking about? As if evolutionary biology is a fad. What a bizarre way to frame this conversation right out of the gate. When it is as much a fad as gravity or the existence of atoms. I'm sorry, buddy, but it's just not going anywhere while it's, well, you know, true. Profs at prestigious universities, top-notch high school teachers, and all kinds of scientists the world over insist that evolution is a bona fide fact. Now isn't that weird? All these people who know about this thing, who understand and study it, who spent basically their whole lives in pursuit of the knowledge that we use today in multiple fields from agriculture to medicine. Those people who have seen it work, know it works, and like, use it because it works. They think it's a fact. Pfft, what a bunch of fools. Have they not even read the Bible? It's not in there, so it can't be true. Seems obvious to me and my massive brain. But is it? Yes. And unless you are going to, in this three and a half minute long steaming turd of a video, demonstrate 100 plus years of science that is pretty much all used to certain degrees today to do things that work is all false. I seriously doubt any person with a brain in their skull is going to come to any other conclusion. Well, we're going to gander at the biggie and take it on mano a mano. You're going to look at it and then you're going to fight it. I mean, I would love to see you get into a boxing match with piles and piles and piles of books and papers and all the people who worked on them to support it. I just think it would be really funny to watch someone die by being crushed by knowledge. Not going to lie. How, you ask? No, I learned a long time ago never to ask anything of people who don't understand the basic precepts of science. They usually say really stupid things and make what is left of my brain hurt quite badly. And then I've got to go drink all the whiskey. And then we run out and everyone gets mad at me and it's a whole thing, not really worth it. With math. Oh, f off, you can't disprove a science that has been demonstrated time and time again to be true, false, by doing some fucking numbers at it. That's not how that works. What you would have to do to disprove evolution is to come up with an idea that explains all the evidence that we have without contradicting itself constantly or ignoring vast swathes of that evidence. And funnily enough, Nothing, from you guys or whoever, does that better than evolution does. Almost like it's a f***ing fact or something. But before I jump into my speedy soliloquy, you'll surreptitiously squeeze out spontaneous stupids attempting smacking smart and spanking skillful folks, staggeringly strong ideas, showing silliness to sundry subjects. In not terrible English, basically, you'll dishonestly try to make us look dumb, but instead show everyone that you are, in fact, an idiot. When I say evolution, I'm talking about mindless and undirected forces arranging already existing atoms over lots of time, eventually and ultimately producing all the life we see around us. Uh, that simply does not describe what evolution is. Evolution happens regardless of whether or not it's being directed. Humans have been directing the evolution of a ton of life forms for thousands of years. So before you even start, you don't know what evolution is and are confusing it with natural selection. And even on that, what exactly do you mean undirected? Because evolution by natural selection is very much not undirected. Now, it certainly isn't directed by a mind, but it is made to work in a specific direction due to forcing. But just because no one is telling it what to do doesn't mean that it has no direction. That's like saying rivers have no direction because they occur naturally. You try telling that to one as you are swept out into the f***ing ocean, mate. 
Now, back to math and a little bit of chemistry. I will be freaking staggered if you understand either. And even more so if you do anything other than convince me you don't understand anything about evolution, how it works, and how we know that it is a real thing that happens instead of just making shit up to make your idiot audience think you are a smart boy. But don't worry, you don't need to know much to knock down this fallaciously feeble, finicky, and faulty Frankensteinian fable foisted fervently from fanciful figures framing fakery for Faustian fame. No, 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 no end. Right, I'm not even gonna bother trying to one-up you on that one. Mostly because I'll probably just call you fucking, 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 fucking for idiots. And, um, you don't need to know much to knock it down. Well, aren't you just telling on your audience there? Hey, idiots! I know you morons will understand this, although, if you think any massively well understood academic field is really, really, really easy to knock down, you might want to take a second and ask yourself why that is, and why, when you present your nonsense, it is indeed dismissed as such. Is it because they are too stupid to understand your smart boy arguments, or perhaps they know something you don't know, and by something, I mean all of the things. Uh, here we go. <laughs> What's with the record scratch? What are you appealing to fucking 90s kids? Because as an experienced 90s, uh, we were fucking lame back then. I mean, look at this shit. If there's someone who you really don't want to impress, it is someone who thinks that this shit is cool. Because that's me and I'm a right dog. Now, where did I put my bum bag? All right, it's on my bum. This is a protein, the basic building block of life. Nope, I think you will find that that is a squiggly line drawn by one of your clearly overqualified art team. This is a protein, although not the only one. There are at least two proteins in the world. I don't know where the other one is, but this one is mine and you can't have it. But you can keep your shitty little line art. A protein is made up of a chain of amino acids that bond together in a specific sequence. When it comes to living things though, not just any amino acid will do, and not just any sequence will work. You gotta love it when they do an okay job of explaining what a sciencey thing is, and then at some point they will just stop. But it never occurs to them, if they were okay with everything up to that point, and all the science was done by the same sciences that do the stuff they don't like, why is one thing right and smart and everything else wrong? Of course, self-reflection is only a thing those big dumb idiots do, so... First, of the roughly 300 amino acids we know of, only about 20 are useful for life. Right. Again, it's like he's following the textbooks until it goes somewhere he doesn't like. And if I were to guess, it will be something, something, something. Isn't it amazing that they only use the ones that are the ones they use? Second, these amino acids must be arranged in a very rare sequence to form the right kind of protein useful to build a living cell. Right, yeah, sure, but so what? I mean, of course they would be the way they are. If they weren't, you wouldn't be here to say that the people who figured that out are big dumb idiots who don't understand science. But Mr. Evolution is Stupid Man has figured out a flaw that will somehow make all the things made using the science he doesn't like magically stop working somehow. Because that is how it works, right? Reality is based on the beliefs of scientists. Because now, all we gotta do is make them believe the river by my house is made of whiskey, and I'm in business. And by business, I do of course mean drunk. So, you got the basics, let's do the math. Oh, uh, let's not, and instead do literally anything else. Because numbers alone don't really prove anything in this kind of science. It's the evidence that does that, and when you do the evidence, it... Oh, look at that, it shows evolution is true. It's no wonder that you don't want to do it, eh. What are the odds that an undirected, mindless process like evolution could produce just one single protein molecule fit for life? Well, I see the odds are exactly if I have my numberizing machine set up right and I aim it just south of Jupiter and do a couple of spins and aha, I figured it out. It is meaningless because it happened regardless of the odds of something happening. If it happened, that's what happened. If you flip a coin a million times, the odds of what outcome you get are astronomically high. And yet, there it is. It happened. And denying it because the odds are high only makes you sound like a tool. 
Let's keep it simple. Simpler than you? I find that highly unlikely. And by you, I don't mean the speaker, I mean whoever wrote this trash. And if that is one and the same, shame on you, using that lovely voice for evil intentionally. How could you? That's my job. The size of a protein with a stable structure called a fold ranges between about 75 and 30,000 amino acids. Holy f that's a big range. Man, you would think that a big, smart, clever god type would make all his proteins pretty similar in size. You know, because of the whole same designer, similar design idea. But that's wildly different. As if instead of being created with some kind of intentionality, they formed via some kind of process that had no desires and simply happened. However it happened. Hmm. Let's just take a small number like 150. Fair enough? Great. Hey, stop deciding that I agree with your decisions. I want one that's made of two amino acids. I don't care if that's not how it comes. I just decided. And if any maker out there can make a universe, I think he can make a two acid protein string. Or I suppose it would be a blob. But whatever, I want it. So, if each amino acid in the chain of 150 has roughly 20 possible variations, that would mean a life-permitting protein forming by chance would be 20 to the 150th. Yes, of course, but you know what's really strange about these look at maths arguments against whatever scientific fact? It never seems to account for time and the fact that things happen more than once. Because if we go back to the flipping a coin a million times thing, yeah, that exact result has some staggering numbers, sure. But if you have two people flipping coins, the likelihood increases. And if you have a million people flipping coins, it becomes more likely again. And if you had trillions of people flipping the coins, yet more likely. And at some point, if you keep increasing the amount of chances for something to happen, there comes a point where it is effectively guaranteed to happen. And when you are working at the scale of nanometers across a planet 510 kilometers squared, many of those kilometers being several fold in depth of water, making that number even higher, and any of those millions of meters, if each nanometer had a chance for the correct formation of proteins every whatever amount of time for billions of years, well, you got yourself a big number there. And yours just doesn't sound quite as big anymore. And again, it's all academic anyway, because it did f***ing happen. Now you reduce that down, pass it around, you get 10 to the 195th on the wall. That's a 1 with 195 zeros after it, just in case you didn't know. Okay, great. That's a whole lot of numbers, but surely if every square nanometer of the 1,386,000,000 cubic kilometers of water on the planet have a chance for that to happen every femtosecond for a billion years, well, I feel like that number is going to start feeling a lot smaller. Although ultimately it is irrelevant and not just because, you know, it happened, etc. But because you haven't told us how you even came to that number. You haven't given us any of the variables. What are the forces involved? What materials were available? You have not explained how exactly any of this means anything. And so, it means nothing. But there are other rare sequences that can work, and we would have to factor that into the equation. But I'll be honest, I just don't want to do that. Look, man, I appreciate the laziness, but does that not mean that you're ignoring other combinations, which would then lower the odds of proteins forming? I mean, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but if that's what you're doing, is that not wildly intellectually dishonest? Hey, here's this thing that makes me wronger. I'm not going to do it because it would make me wronger. Anyway, fuck, I'm surprised you even brought it up for non-existo's sake. Thankfully, Doug Axe, a molecular biologist, has, and he found that the odds of a relatively short protein to properly function are less than 1 in 10 to the 77th. Okay, fair enough, and aside from the fact that Doug Axe is an amazing name, that uh, kind of proves my point, I think. That's one of them. So, if we are just going any proteins forming, then surely it gets lower still. And my chances concept is still going to be working away, and that's not to mention that in all likelihood the simple proteins would have been the ones to form earlier, and that other more complex proteins could have come later with the rest of the umpteen billions of years that come after some simple life forms have already, you know, happened. 
which is true for a large number of proteins. So that's a one with 77 zeros. Now you throw the peptide and the left-handed amino acid problems in there, you get something close to 10 to the 164th. You really are just throwing around big numbers in the hopes that the simple sight of them will trick whoever's watching into thinking that because big numbers must be true. And that's regardless of any of them actually being accurate or meaningful. And again, has nothing to do with explaining the evidence that evolution is a fact and a thing that happens all the fucking time. Now, keep in mind that scientists define the occurrence of anything with less than 1 in 10 to the 50th as absurd. Do they? Okay, let's just assume that's true. Never heard it myself, but sure. Then, surely, these same scientists who are both right and wrong about the thing you like and wrong about the ones you don't, how have they missed this obvious thing? Or maybe you're full of shit and are making things up in order to make yourself sound smart. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. But we're way beyond absurd here. Allow me to paint a visual. It would be like traveling the universe in an accidentally manufactured spacecraft, stopping on a whim, then reaching out blindfolded into a sea of 10 to the 80th different colored atoms and retrieving the only red one. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we were calculating the odds of finding a smart creationist on the fucking internet. Okay, fair enough. I concede on that fine point. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-